What shall I offer to the Lord to make him happy? What shall I offer to the Lord to please him? I may give him the best of my clothes, he may not take it. I may give him the best of my shoes, he may not take it. A humble heart, a patient heart, a broken heart, a humble heart he will love. What shall I offer to the Lord to make him happy? What shall I offer to the Lord to please him? I may give him the best of my clothes, he may not make it. I may give him the best of my shoes, he may not take it. A humble heart, a patient heart, a loving heart, a humble heart he will love. What shall we offer to the Lord to make him happy? What shall we offer to our God to please him? We may give him the best of our cars, he may not take it. We may give him the best of our horses, he may not take it. A humble heart, a patient heart, a loving heart, a broken heart, he will love. A humble heart, a patient heart, a loving heart. A broken heart he will love. What shall you offer to your God to make him happy? What shall you offer to our God to please him? We may give him the best of our careers, he may not take it. We may give him the best of our relationships, he may not take it. A humble heart, a patient heart, a broken heart, a loving heart he will love. A living sacrifice, all of our life, we surrender totally to Him. He will love a sacrifice, living sacrifice, our whole life. A sacrifice, He will love our whole life as a living sacrifice on the altar. Total surrender, He will love. A broken heart, a patient heart, a humble heart, a loving heart he will. What shall I offer to the Lord to make him happy? What shall I offer to my God to please him? I may give him the best of my cars, he may not take it. I may give him the best of my office, he may not take it. A sacrifice, living sacrifice on the altar, all surrender he will love. A living sacrifice on the altar, a loving heart, a patient heart he will love. Greetings everybody, welcome once again. It's your favorite girl, Princess Cleeton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> On here we get to know who we are in Christ, the boy possess the things we can and cannot do, we should or should not do, so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth, and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view, that's the whole idea. And while we're at it, we also create a King James Version audio Bible, and then we study the Word of God together. We celebrate people who have their birthdays as well. So you could be the next person that we get to celebrate on a chapter a day. This is your beautiful program and we always start with prayer and end with prayer you say prayer is the master key and i believe that strongly without any other of doubt i know today is thanksgiving sunday all over the world no like in a lot of places around the world especially in africa a lot of people are doing thanksgiving service today so does it mean that we should say thank you lord only during the season only at this period no we're supposed to have an attitude of gratitude to become a lifestyle for us we're supposed to live a grateful life because the truth is every single day god does something that is worth being grateful for in our lives if you don't think there is anything then i would say the fact that you are alive it's a reason to be grateful to god you didn't do anything so special or anything too different that made you to be alive today. The people who died, they didn't do something so terrible. Or they didn't miss not doing something that God wanted them to do before they died. No. 
You are alive because of God. It's God who decided, He chose in His infinite mercy and His loving kindness to make sure that you are alive today. Some people are alive but are in the hospital, paying for oxygen. You're here taking it for free. And you're grumbling and murmuring. Some people don't even know if they're going to be able to eat today. Well, you've probably already eaten a second or a third time. And you are sure beyond every reasonable doubt that you're going to eat in the evening. You're going to eat in the afternoon. If it's morning for you, you're going to eat afternoon and evening. You are sure beyond all reasonable doubt that you're going to eat. But some people don't even know where food is going to come from. Not even just for today, but for a really long period of time. And they're just hoping that somehow God does a miracle. And you're murmuring? Man, we need to step up. We need to snap out of it. Learn to have a grateful heart. Believe me, I'm talking from experience. When you become a grateful person, when you learn how to say thank you for little, you get more. I am a walking testimony. I'm a living testimony to that. I'm telling you guys. It works. It just works. So learn to be grateful. And when you learn how to be grateful, you're going to realize that you become contented. Because you know everything that you have is something that was given to you. And for the most part, we really don't deserve it. If it has to be based on qualifications to get some of these gifts that we get, the gift of life, the gift of health, the gift of protection, provision, if, we want, if, if, if it had to be based on qualifications, some of us would never ever qualify. Oh yes, some of us would never qualify. But thank God that is through Jesus Christ. And it is free. The price Jesus paid was his life. But he made that price, he paid that hefty price for you to get that for free. All that you're getting, you're getting life, you're getting salvation, you're getting health, you're getting provision, you're getting all these things. In fact, you're saved and you're reconciled back to God because Jesus paid a heavy price on the cross. A shameful death. But hey, it's good news because you and I were saved. We're here today because Jesus Christ made that sacrifice on the cross. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, people. It's just outright beautiful. Okay, guys. So we have to pray, and then we get to the birthday party. Today, our Bible party is taken from Jeremiah chapter 29, and it has 32 verses. Jeremiah 29, and he has 32 verses. So let's pray and start up with a birthday party. So, yes. Even as you're doing Thanksgiving service today, let it not only be that you thank God only this season, only this time, only in this ways. You need to learn to thank God every single day. You need to learn to thank God every single moment. Like a music artist says, when I thought that he had done too much, oops, he did it again. That's how God keeps doing. So if you want to even sit down to be counting your blessings, to name them one by one, to appreciate God for them, then we're definitely never going to finish because by the time you're getting, you're thinking you're getting to the end of it, he keeps doing more and more and more. And that's why the Bible says we're moving from glory to glory. I don't know who needed to hear this, but God knows you do. And I pray that when you hear it, it's going to give you the push. It's going to give you the lift. It's going to give you all that you need to move forward. It's going to give you all that you need to not give up on you, to not give up on God either. And pray that that works, that that's how it gets to happen for you. That as you receive this, God is going to help you through all the times that you have. God is going to lift you. God is going to lead you. God is going to truly, truly bless you. So guys, let's get on. It's a chapter today. And I'm sure you're having a great time so far. And we're starting with a word of prayer. After which, we're going to go get on with our party for today. The Bible party, of course. But right now, we are just dealing with the prayers. You know, this is the start of it. So, let's get this party going, okay? 
Are you ready, guys? If you're ready, tell me you're ready. We didn't check if we are live. Uh, sometimes I forget. I'm so sorry, guys. We always do this. We try to check and be sure that we are live because sometimes we are not. I'm so sorry. What shall I offer to my God to make him happy? What shall I offer to my God to please him? I may give him the best of my clothes. Take it. He doesn't want material things. The truth is he gave it to us anyways. But he doesn't need it. Yeah, he doesn't. Okay, we're live. We're good to go. We're good to go, people. We are good to go. Okay, guys, so let's get this Bible party started. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for always being the first, always loving us, always standing the gap for us. Lord, we thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for our sakes. You made salvation available. You made reconciliation with you possible. We are forever grateful. We do not take that for granted, Daddy. We say thank you. We really, really do appreciate you for your goodness. We really, really do appreciate you for your faithfulness, your loving kindness, your tender mercies. We are truly grateful, eternally grateful to you. We do not take it for granted, Daddy. We are so, so honored to have you as our Father. We pray that today you're going to speak to us in a very special way, in a way that only you can. In a way that will bring transformation, lifting, salvation, deliverance, enlightenment, guidance, protection, provision, and all of the things that are needed for us to grow and be that version that you've created us and called us to be. Father, we are so, so thankful to you. Cause us to increase while you, cause us to decrease while you increase. So it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, heard, and experienced throughout this edition of the chapter a day. Father, we pray, oh God. That you're going to bless us. Back your word with signs and wonders. There will be deliverance, breakthrough, acceleration, divine ideas, divine speed. Lord, we say thank you. For in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints shall say, Ginomus, thanks be to God. Hi, Challenge Live. Hi, Granny. Hi, Quene Carlos. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming, grandson. Hope you are good. And you're doing your best. Shalom to you as well. And happy Sunday. So the first person on our birthday book today is Mr. Mbia Abiu. Mr. Mbia Abiu is one of those persons that I met. You remember I was talking about um, some other person two days back or something like that. And I told you that we met at the Christian Gospel Radio and later on connected at the CBC Radio, right? Yeah, that's how I got to connect with Mr. Abiu. And uh, he's also an electronic um, supplier, phones, I think, um, earphones, workmans, and stuff like that. I think he has those. But for phones, I'm quite sure without any IoT of doubt. For earphones, I'm sure without any IoT of doubt. But I don't know about the other one. But he, he, he's into a lot of electronic business. Um, he sells a lot of electronics. Phones, I'm sure, without any idea of that. So I got to meet him while we're doing um, the program at the CBC Radio. And I was very, very much pleased because it's easy to live around people that believe in what you believe in and stand for what you stand for. So happy birthday to you. And there were times where I needed to buy a mobile phone or something. I needed to fix my battery and stuff. He was the one who helped me with all of that. And I'm grateful that I got to know him because I got some discounts. And yes, he was also one of those people that made me going to the CBC radio and going back to my house very possible. It's like these guys just made up their minds, put up something like they'll always like do a contribution kind of thing and then get me to come to CBC radio and go back home safely. Sometimes they'll buy me stuff like some really nice snacks and stuff in the evening like I used to like so much. Oh my God, it was really cool. It was really, really beautiful, and I'm grateful for it. Okay, so.
So let's go. The next person is Mr. Fongio Peter. Mr. Fongio Peter is a young, younger brother of one of my very good friends, Mr. Mac. I got to know them when I was at the university. And Mr. Mac actually helped me a lot when I was at the university. So that's how I got to know his younger brother. Because he told me that his younger brother had, had gotten to the university. While we were there, his younger brother came to the university. I think that was when I was in my final year or my second year. I'm not sure exactly. And the young man is so brilliant so smart very hard working and he's very very um, um focused he's very very vision oriented which is a very good thing i was so proud of him i was glad that i knew him i was glad that we're connected and all that happy birthday to you mr Fonjo peter god bless you the last but not the least is a little sister a beautiful friend an amazing person mom chimela mom precious successful I was about to call her brother's name. Mom Precious Successful is a sister to one of my very good friends, Osofu Chimela Successful. Okay, so I got to know all of them through their elder brother. He's the one I call Pastor Chimela Successful. I got to know all of them through their brother. And I remember they came and visited me. It was a beautiful, it was a beautiful visit. Oh my God. I didn't want it to end. Ah, this little girl, she is so much fun, so much vibe. I mean, like, I had a great time with them, an awesome time with them. She came with her sister, one of her sisters, and one of her younger brothers. They came to visit me. That was when I just got to Nigeria, like, you know. No, that was not the first time I got to Nigeria, but that was when I got to Nigeria, and I stayed there for quite a while, you know. That was one of those times. And I got to um, meet with them and all. I think we were planning an outing, but we never got it. Did we? Precious, we didn't get that out here, right? Oh my God. So we'll put it on hold. I pray that by some sheer miracle, if I get to come again to Nigeria, we're going to get that out in that um, we planned. And they're a very amazing family. They love God as well with a passionate passion. Precious has a really pretty voice. I could never forget that. And of course, she's also one very focused and friendly and um, welcoming person. The way they just took me in like this is sister this is family oh my god it was so cool it was such a sweet sweet experience so let's go again happy birthday to you kid sister i love you Mwah. let's go happy birthday mr mbangia abihu happy birthday mr fungio peter happy birthday man precious successful so these are the people who have on our birthday book but you know the drill right we pray for every single person who is born on a particular day. We don't just pray for those who are on the birthday book. We pray for every single person who is born on this day, okay? So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. So let's get this prayer started. Are you ready? Ready or not, here I come. <laughs> okay, guys, so let's go. Let's get this Bible party started. I love you all so much, but I know you guys are going to get ready for me. You guys are going to come for me. So let's get to go. Let's get going, going. Let's get go, 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 going, going. Let's get going. So we'll pray for the birthday people and we'll start up with a, with a Bible party. Like I told you guys, the Bible party today is taken from the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 and it has uh, 32 verses. So let's get this Bible party going and we'll get right on. Oh my God, sorry. I want to be sure that that page is open and ready so we don't start getting confused with what we have to do. Okay, so we're ready. Let's pray for the birthday people. And like I said, your birthday can also get into our birthday book. You just need to send us a message on our inbox or here in the comment section with your birthday mine is 31st july you could send yours maybe it's 22nd december maybe it's 4th of october maybe it's 13th october you know maybe it's 2nd of april whatever your birthday is or whenever your birthday is you can actually just send it to us and we'll save it in the birthday book and then we'll be able to celebrate you as well when it's your due day so let's pray Father, we thank you for this day that you've made. We rejoice. I'm glad in you. We thank you for adding a new year to the lives of all these people who were born today. We pray, O oh God, that you open the windows of heaven and pour out the treasures of your blessings upon their lives, rebuking every devourer in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you do for them that which no man can do, O oh Father. Lord, you bless them with the choices of your blessings. And as this blessing encompasses them, as a shield ran about, no weapon formed or fashion against them shall prosper. And any tongue that rises against them in judgment, you shall condemn. There will be a blessing in their generation and beyond, O oh God. Father, cause them to do great and mighty works all for your glory. We give you all the praise, we give you all the honor and adoration because you deserve it. Blessed be your holy name in all the earth. Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. You are faithful and your faithfulness is forever from everlasting to everlasting we say thank you lord for all that you've done we appreciate you for your goodness we appreciate you for your loving kindness we appreciate you for your tender mercies you are a faithful god you are an awesome god lord we pray oh god that you cause us once to increase the wisdom and statue getting favor before god and before men oh god father that they will stand toward, they will stand out. No one is going to take away from them that which you've given to them, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that you bless them with the choices of your blessings continuously. That as this blessing overflow upon their lives, people will literally rub off from the blessings from their lives. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to be their best and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are a faithful Father. Thank you, King of Glory, because you deserve all the praise. You deserve all the honor, all the adoration. There is none like unto thee, O God. Amongst the gods who is like thee, you are glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, always doing wonders. Blessed be your holy name, O God, in all the earth. We magnify you, O God. We enthrone you, O God. You are the great I am that I am. You are the beginning and the end. You are the mighty man in battle. Lord, we thank you, O God. We pray that you open doors to them that no man can shut and shut every door that is not of you. We pray that you cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men. Let their gifts make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings. Give them all that it takes to be able to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you cause them to stand out and not fit in because each and every one of us was created for a unique purpose, to be a solution to a unique problem here on earth, O God. So, Father... As they realize and figure out what the problem is that they are supposed to solve, that there is a solution to, oh God, and they step on it, oh God. They might get to a place where they feel overwhelmed. They feel like they want to give up or back out. Lord, at such a time, they will hear a clean, loud, clear voice that's going to say, this is the way walk down in it. They will not stray, they will not derive from the park all for your glory and they'll be the ones manifesting to the groaning nation that is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god father your word says we should call on you and you answer us and show us greater mighty things which you never know let that be a practical reality for them before they call you answer before they cry out you would hear oh god father i pray that you teach them all that it takes to not only get to the top but get there and stay there permanently you're the master strategist we believe in all your techniques lord we pray oh god that you're going to do for them excellent and marvelous things that only you god can because you know that they need it father we say thank you we truly appreciate you from the depths of our hearts we seal every prayer request with the blood of jesus we say thank you because we know it is signed sealed done and dusted it is already settled lord we pray oh god that you are going to help them oh god to be able to be focused perfect all that concerns them Give them a sounds 126 states, a state of continuous laughter, singing, rejoicing, celebration, and jubilation. And if you try to come, they'll be here same time next year, testifying of all the awesome sauce things you've done for them, because this is going to be their best birthday yet. Lord, we say thank you. We seal all this birthday, all these prayers with the blood of Jesus. And we pray, oh God, that they are going to be done just like we've requested. You say we've not asked, we've not received because we've not asked. Today we've asked, oh Lord, and we know that we're going to receive in grand style. Thank you, Lord. Let money meet money in their pockets, blesses me, blessing their lives. Favor meets favor in their lives, even as you clothe them with a the garment of praise, honor, and favor. Open their eyes to see those they're supposed to be destined to help us to, and strategically position them to be in a place where they will be able to help these people and also strategically position their destiny helpers all around them. So when they also cry out for help, help is going to be made available to them in Santa. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for being a great and a mighty God. For in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints shall say, Jainamas, Amen. But I sing the Amen. So let's go. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their life. Come on. Come on. Amen. Mm. 
Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you all tremendously. Give you a blast. And may he enlarge your course and increase you on every side. I always get to say I love you so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Have a blast. Happy birthday. Je vous aime, mais je vous aime plus, plus fort que moi. Joyeux anniversaire à tout le monde. Mouah, 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 mouah. I love you all so much. Happy birthday. So let's get this Bible party started. If you're just signing on or tuning in, it's a chapter a day, your favorite audio Bible creation program and Bible study program. With your favorite girl, Princess Clayton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> and on here we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do, so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view, that's the whole idea. Ah, yes. And while we're at it, we also create a King James Version audio Bible, which is what we're about to do right now. And then we study the Word of God together. See you guys. Let's get this Bible party started. Okay. Okay. Okie dokie. Let's go, people. Are you ready? Ready or not? Here I come. Jeremiah chapter 29. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captives and to the priests and to the prophets and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. After that Jeconiah the king and the queen and the eunuchs and the princes of Judah and Jerusalem and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem. By the hand of Elasa, the son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus say the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem, unto Babylon. Build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and, and daughters. Take ye wives, and beget Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there, and not diminish. And seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me. And when ye shall search for me with all your heart, and ye shall search and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. 
and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Because ye have said, the Lord had raised us up prophets in Babylon. Know that thus saith the Lord of the king that seated upon the throne of David, and all the people that dwelleth in this city, and of your brethren that are not gone forth with you into captivity. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will send upon them the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, and will make them like vile things that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. And I will persecute them with the sword, with, fa with the famine, and with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a curse, and an astonishment, and an hissing, and a reproach among all the nations whither I have driven them, because they have not hearkened to my word, saith the Lord, which I sent unto them by my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them. But ye will not hear, saith the Lord. Hear ye therefore the words of the Lord. Hear ye therefore the word of the Lord, all ye of the captivity, whom I have sent from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, of Ahab the son of Kolahir, and of Zedekiah, the son of Maseiah, which prophesy a lie unto you in my name. Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall slay them before your eyes. And of them shall be taken up a curse by all the captivity of Judah, which at in Babylon, saying, The Lord made thee like Zedekiah and like Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire, because they have committed villainy in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives and have spoken lying words in my name, which I have not commanded them. Even I know and am a witness, saith the Lord. Thus shalt thou also speak to Shemahiah, the Nehelamite, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Because thou hast sent letters in thy name unto all the people that are at Jerusalem, and to Zephaniah, the son of Maseiah, the priest, and to all the priests, saying, The Lord had made thee priest in the stead of Jehoiada, the priest, that ye should be officers in the house of the Lord for every man that is mad and maketh himself a prophet that thou shouldest put him in prison and in the stocks. Now therefore, why hast thou not reproved Jeremiah of Anathoth, which maketh himself a prophet to you? For therefore he sent unto us in Babylon. For therefore he sent unto us in Babylon, saying, This captivity is long. Build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. And Zephaniah the priest read this letter in the ears of Jeremiah the prophet. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Send to all them of the captivity, saying, Thus saith the Lord concerning Shemahiah the Nehelamite, because that Shemahiah had prophesied unto you, and I sent him not, and he caused you to trust in a lie. Therefore thou saith the Lord, therefore thou saith the Lord, behold, I will punish Shemahiah the Nehelamite, and his seed. He shall not have a man to dwell among his people, neither shall he behold the good that I will do for my people, saith the Lord, because he had taught rebellion against the Lord. This is the word of the Lord, and all the saints shall say a ginormous thanks be to God. So what did you learn? What did you learn? What did you learn? Hi, Tim Mai. Hi, Mr. Undo. Mr. Undo Survivor. Hi, Derry. Hi, Estelle Jenna. Oh, my God, you're here. You always come through. That's cool. So let's get to study this. Audio Bible done, dusted, and created. Now we are studying the word of God. 
So let's get to find out what God has said concerning us in the scripture so that we can be able to leave the word out. Okay? So let's go. Now, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders, which were carried away captives, and to the priests, and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive. After that, Jeconiah, the king and the queen, and the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem. By the hand of Elasa, the son of Shaphan, and Jema, and Jemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens and eat the fruits thereof. Child of God, sometimes this is what happens. You are in a situation, it's a tough situation, it's hard. And you're thinking, Lord, remove me from this space. No, that's not God's desire for you. He wants you to be in that space and learn the lesson. So he would not be fast to remove you from that situation. Rather, he will tell you to learn how to be in that situation, trusting that he's with you regardless. This is what was happening to the children of Israel, Judah and Jerusalem. They have been taken captive. And many, many prophets have been coming and trying to lie to them and telling them how, oh, the, 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 the thing is not going to last for long. God is about to set them free. God didn't send them home. So now God has sent the person that he has always been sending. He sent Jeremiah to send them in, an information and tell them that, oh, this thing is not going to be short as these people who are lying to you that say no. People are saying two years. People are saying this, you know. It's not true. It's going to be long. So you guys should just learn to live in that place. Believe me. I've had a couple of times where people are telling me, like, what kind of place is this? Like, you should move. Like, stuff like that. And I'm like, for some weird reason, God has not told me to move yet. And if he has not told me to move, it means he, he doesn't want me moving. You get? And so just moving by emotions, based on emotions, based on our physical calculations, right? This place is not the best of them. Yeah. And it's not like I don't have options. I have options. But those options are not God options. I told you guys, right, that what God always told me, Princess, it's doing the God thing that is important, not the good thing. There are good things that are not God things. But there are God things. All God things are good things. And he always gives, gives me an example. The example he gave me was... Um, David and Solomon. It was a good thing to want to build a house for the Lord. The ark had been all over the place and didn't have a place to stay, to be kept, to be preserved and all. And so David wakes up and he's feeling all good and excited and happy and he wants to build a temple for God. And God says, no, it's not a God thing for you, David. It's a good thing, quite all right. I commend you for it, but it's not a God thing. The God thing for you to be doing is just to keep fighting your battles. You see, this thing is a God thing for your son Solomon, not for you. So you had better just leave it. So sometimes we force ourselves to want to do some things just because it's nice, just because it's lovely. Doesn't mean God is involved. I remember a friend of mine came and spoke to me and gave me like some, this really, oh my God, it's a sumptuous business idea. Man, it's so good. It's so, so good. I can tell you, like, you, you can feel how much I feel the pain. But one thing I've realized in this life is that if you do something that God is not involved in, <laughs> they say he who builds a house without God is building in vain. He who watches a house without God watching with him is vain. It's vain. So no matter how cool something looks, if God has not endorsed it when it comes to me, I didn't day. I didn't day, child of God. You know, like, I don't even, first of all, have the peace. Like, in my heart, when I'm thinking about the thing, I don't even have the peace. It's a good, it's a very brilliant and beautiful business idea. I bet you all. It is cool. And then my friend was asking me, like, has God not said anything? I said, oh, I have to sleep on it and pray on it. And if God tells me, okay, I'm going to get on. But you see this one? God hasn't told me anything yet. 
and he kept asking me and then he asked me after a while you know it has been like a week or two or something god hadn't said anything to me either and i said god has not said anything to me and he was like oh are you sure it's for this reason are you sure it's not this and this and this reason all those reasons eh? when god gives you a mission he gives you a company provision so the problem can never be provision because if god wants you to do this business today he will provide for you today i've been in situations where i needed money much money i mean like much money and god raised people who gave me the money i was looking for the money on borrow basis god raised two people who gave me like the biggest chunk of the amount of money for free for free and i've had times where god makes me remove a big chunk of amount of money and give to some other person so i understand that just as he moves me to do that same kind of thing, that's how he also moved those people to do it for me. So I cannot even afford to panic because I need something, I need this, I need that. If God wants me on that thing, he's going to bring it like that, like the flip of the finger. It took minutes and seconds for Joseph to, be, to move from being a prisoner to being the second best in command. In a country that was like the greatest country of the world at that time. From being a prisoner, we're talking about a prisoner. You know how people come out of prison and they have this kind of tag on them that it looks like when they go to look for a job, it's a problem. But this guy did not only move from being a prisoner, he was a slave originally. Now a slave who is a prisoner added to it. How worse can it be? How worse could he have gotten? But just within minutes, it took God minutes to change his status from a prisoner, a renowned prisoner, that's how I call it, to the second in command of the greatest nation of the world. You've got to be kidding me. Then I won't serve that God. So there are some times. Go, I'm sure, I don't know if Joseph was praying that God should remove him from these old scenarios and all those kinds of things. But hey, God was not about doing it. He had that vision when he was a child. It took about 17 years for that to manifest. No, that was David. I think David's own. He was anointed king, but it took about 17 years for him to sit on the throne. After being anointed. So child of God. Sometimes God will just come and comfort you. He will just come and be that comforter to you in that situation. He will not remove you from there. No matter how badly you want to leave the place, God is not going to remove you from there. Yeah. He's going to leave you there. Because he knows what he wants to do. He probably wants to showcase his glory to the world. Yeah. Hi Mads. Hi Tanmoy. How are you? So that's what happens. You see, he's telling them that, oh, you guys should not be thinking about moving. Oh, you're not moving now. Maybe it's you. You're thinking. You're in this place. It's so sad. It's so hard. It's so complicated. You want to move. The normal thing in my mind is I want to move. I really want to. But has God said? If God has not said, you risk moving to the wrong place and it will be worse. You go come off of fry pan, enter fire. Fry pan was even preserving you from the heat a little bit. You will just enter, dive into the fire at once. So please, eh, in, especially in these last days, don't move as God has not told you. Don't do anything that God has not told you and beg you. It will just bring you stress and wahala. It's better you be in that position and then it looks like you're stagnant. Let the world think whatever they want to think. When is God's time to flip it? I'm sure some people in prison, if they heard Joseph's scenario, Joseph's story, they would say, but why did you not just keep with Hannah? I, after all, she's the one pushing herself on you. She's the one throwing herself on you. You didn't ask for it. Did you always hear what Joseph was saying all the time? He wasn't even bothered by really much about Potiphar. He was bothered about God. How can I do such wickedness to my God? That was always his statement. It was about God. So what has God said to you? This is God sending a message through Jeremiah. He told them when they were going to get into captive. And he's now telling them that 
they should stay there for a long time that they're going to be there for a while so they should prepare they should prepare like they're going to stay in that place you you want to move god is telling you to prepare and stay you want to move hmm. we're going to one chance so anyways that's by the way build the houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruits of them take your wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminished of course these people would have probably been scared to want to mingle because at times that god will tell you not to mingle like that but this is god's instruction directly from him so it's allowed he says you guys should mingle and the reason was that he didn't want them to diminish he wanted them to still be there like they should still have a good chunk of them you know they should not disappear that generation should not be wiped out you know um the israelites should not be wiped out because they overwork the stress and everything sure they're in captivity right so it, it was going to make them wear out and some of them would die and all those kinds of things and if they did not reproduce the lineage will eventually wipe out so god had already foreseen and he knows the end from the beginning anyway he had already seen that they were going to be there for a really long time if he really wanted them to bear children oh yeah he wanted them to bear children so that their lineage doesn't disappear which meant they were going to be there for a long time yeah yeah sons and daughters with s you know it takes nine months to have a child in your tummy then you give birth and then the child grows and then some people you know after one year again or two years they get to get another child so probably it will take like some four or five years if you want to think about it putting s on that thing excluding the part that okay some people could give birth to twins and stuff like that but hey may the good lord help us in jesus name so it says and seek the peace of the city whither i have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the lord for it for in the peace thereof shall he have peace yeah sometimes we're in a situation we're in a place yeah at the times where i felt like i should pray that god should deal with these people when they're dealing with me there are times that i really want to pray like that but i know that that's not god's desire god wants these people as well to be saved so um as, as much as it's not very funny and I don't like it, I do pray for them. I do. I pray for, for good things to happen to them. I pray for God to bless them. I, I pray for God to open the windows of heaven for them. And I just say, vengeance is yours. So I hand them over. If vengeance needs to be taken on, then you should be the one to do it perfectly. Because God knows how to serve people perfectly. He rewards diligently. Be it good or bad. The reward is very diligent. He doesn't make mistakes. So yes, that's it. He says, pray for these people and pray for peace in that land. These people have taken you captive. You are a captive. Like you are technically. You are a slave. And you should be praying for that land, that there should be peace in the land. And those people should be fine. Yes, because the truth is, if they have peace, you also have peace. But if they don't have peace, you could not have peace. That baby that says the mother will not sleep, they themselves will not sleep. Is that cool? You get us to be. Anyways, let's go. It says, um, For those here, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and, and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams, which ye cause to be dreamed. So, of course, there are times where we dream of things not because God wants us to dream of those things, but because we've spoken of those things over and over and over. There are different kinds of dreams. You dream because God is giving you a dream. You dream because the enemy could give you a dream. You dream because of your thoughts. What you've been thinking about, what you've been pondering about over and over and over, it just starts coming into your thoughts. And then you're thinking that, oh, maybe this is God. So when it comes to dream, you really need to be careful and you need to go back to God and ask again and again and again, Lord, is this you speaking? But anyways, when you start getting used to the voice of God, you won't be confused whether it's God speaking or is you speaking. Because the voice of God is so clear. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice and I know the voices of my sheep. You're only going to know God's voice when you have been listening to him consistently. You cannot just wake up and just, just want to like be perfect at that thing. You know, 
you will not just be thinking in your head, oh, the day that I'll just start hearing God here. You have to start. Sometimes you will make that mistake. You will think it was God who spoke, and then it was not Him. And then you cry out to Him for mercy. And then you go back to Him again. And then He will speak again. And then this time you will hear. And then you start hearing. It happens. Even to the most spiritual of us, don't beat yourself up. It happens. That's what happens to Christians. That's what happens to baby Christians. Samuel, it was the exact same thing. When he was still a baby, when he was still a child, God was calling him. He didn't know it was God. He didn't understand the voice. He didn't know whose voice it was. There are times in your life that is going to be like that. You will hear a voice at some point. You might think it's your uncle. You might think it's your brother. You might think, you know, but it's God speaking. It's God speaking. So yes, there are times that you might miss it. You will hear the voice, but you might miss it. You might not know it's God's voice. But as you begin to listen and listen and listen, all through till Samuel was older until he died, we didn't hear him getting mixed up or confused whether this was God's voice because he started printing himself and, changing, and training himself. Um, Ellie taught him and said, I go and see it. When it happens again, because he had realized, he had figured out, that's why it's also good to have great mentors and great people that support you in your Christian walk. And then Ellie told him that when you hear that voice again, say, Lord, speak, thy servant hear it. And that's it. That was just it. And from then on, he started hearing God and hearing God and hearing God. And we didn't hear him making mistakes again because it became a consistent thing to him. He, every time he was going to God, every time he was listening to God, every time he was king. So probably when he heard the voice every single time, he just goes on, speak that seven chariot. Speak that seven chariot. Can we get to that place? I have a great prayer partner, guys. Like, I love the way me and how we relate and how we relate to God. Like... You know, I say that some people had a bad experience about fathers, like physical fathers. Because it's so easy for me to relate to God because they say God is a father. And my biological father and even my father right now, they all treat me so nice, so sweet, so beautiful. Like I'm a daddy's daughter, honestly speaking. I can say that confidently. It's not a bad thing. But yes, I'm a daddy's girl, like that. And so when they say God is a father, it, it just clicks. It just resonates. Even though sometimes my early fathers could be annoying. Like, you know. <laughs> but yes, they are sweet like that. But God is sweeter. And so when they tell you that God is a father, you can just connect, right? I'm so sorry for the people who cannot connect. But I tell you the truth. That's your father that is not so nice. God is way, way nicer than that one. Because even me who has nice biological and um and physical fathers even me who has that god is way nicer than them way way nicer than them i'm a, i'm i'm a walking testimony so you can believe me you can trust me when i give you because i have great dads but god is greater like super duper it's like night and day greater that's how good god is above my fathers who are good people really good i'm not just talking basic level good i'm talking about awesome level good that's how good my fathers are yeah but god is way way greater like night and day greater so you can imagine yeah so you can imagine anyways that's it so um this is what happens to these people and then god is telling them that okay you have to pray for these people you don't you, you 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 have to pray for them because when you pray for them they'll get peace and when they get peace you also have peace so whatever is happening whatever you're decreeing that should happen in that country at that time even though you're captive in that country it's going to affect you you are praying that they should be punished some as they are getting punished they'll also be dealing with you because it's going to be annoying them but if there are peace they'll also treat you peacefully so you see, sometimes it's not just all about praying for your enemies to die, for God to kill them, and blah, 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 blah. You can also pray for them to get saved. You can also pray for them to have an encounter. You can also pray for them to turn around. Okay. And I'll persecute them with the sword, and with famine, and with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a curse, and an astonishment, and an hissing. And a reproach among all the nations whither I have driven them.
people are just not going to like you in those nations because it's your time for punishment. Because the possibility is that when people start liking you and do, the tendency is that you're not going to come off that stupidity of serving the wrong kind of gods. You're just going to be comfortable in those things. Because that would be the enemy telling you that, oh, it's okay. It's okay. You're still a child of God. Don't mind that thing. You know, people of Israel, God had already called you all. You all are my children, you know. There's no turning back. God cannot turn back. Child of God. The enemy is just deceiving you. He's just deceiving you. So yes, they had to go here. They had to suffer all these things so that they will learn their lesson. And then truly and by themselves, genuinely, Ask God for help and come back to him. Because they have not hearkened to my words, saith the Lord, which I sent unto them by my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them. But ye will not hear, saith the Lord. Hear ye therefore the word of the Lord, all ye of the captivity, whom I have sent from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, of Ahab and the son of Kolahiah. And of Zedekiah, the king of Maseiah, which prophesy a lie unto you in my name. Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall slay them before your eyes. <laughs> those people that you're trusting in, those people that you're relying on, those people that you're depending on, God himself is going to allow them to be dealt with in front of your eyes so that you will know that they are fake. Yeah, sometimes enough is enough. Like God is giving them a, a, a long rope to pull. And they're taking advantage and just keep doing nonsense and nonsense and nonsense. And so God is going to deal with them perfectly. Yep. He would deal with them. He would so deal with them. And he says, Thus say the Lord, oh. He said, because they have committed villainy. No. And... And of them shall be taken up a curse by all the captivity of Judah, which is in Babylon, which are in Babylon, saying, The Lord make thee like Zedekiah and like Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire. Hmm. Please, O oh, child of God, serving God is a good thing. All this evil and wickedness and all those things that are happening in the world, you don't want to be the one propagating them. You don't want to be the one enabling them. You should be on the winning side. The winning side is God's side. Do you understand? I hope you do. And says, And of them shall be taken out. Oh no. Because they have committed villainy in Israel. And have committed adultery. And with their neighbor's wives. And have spoken lying words in my name. Which I have not commanded them. Even I know. And I am a witness. saith the Lord. You know, the truth is that sometimes eh, we really know that these people are lying to us. But because that's just what we want to hear, so we, we go on with it. But it's not going to help you because the end, it's terrible for you. It's you that will bear the consequence. It will not be funny. It might be looking funny now. It might be looking like all fun and games. Up until when the destruction will come. It says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Because thou hast sent letters in thy name unto all the people that are Jerusalem, and to Zephaniah, the son of Maseiah, the priest, and to all the priests, saying, The Lord hath made thee priest in the stead of Jehoiada, the priest, that ye should be officers in the house of the Lord. For every man that is mad and maketh himself a prophet, that thou shouldest put him in prison and in the stocks. Everybody will get their due punishment though. Everybody will get their due punishment. Now therefore, why hast thou not reproved Jeremiah of Anathoth, which maketh himself a prophet to you? <laughs> For therefore he sent unto us in Babylon, saying, The captivity is long, build ye houses and dwell in them. In plant gardens and eat fruits of them. And Zephaniah, the priest, read this letter in the ears of Jeremiah. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Send to, send to all them of the captivity, saying, Thus saith the Lord concerning Shemahiah, 
the Nehelamite, because that Shemahiah had prophesied unto you, and I sent him not. And he caused you to trust in a lie. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will punish Shemahiah, the Nehelamite, and his seed. He shall not have a man to dwell amongst his people, neither shall he behold the good that I will do for my people, saith the Lord. Some people, eh, your life will be cut short. And I'm, I don't think it's what you want. You want to enjoy the goodness of God. You want to enjoy all that the Lord has promised. So you had better not believe the lies. Believe the truth. The truth is that some of us deep in us, our conscience is telling us that this thing that we're holding on to is not true. This thing that we're listening from this particular person is not true. We know. We know. So God is not just being unfair to punish people like that. He knows that we know inside of our hearts what is true and what is false. And that's why you'll be sanctioned and punished. That's why you'll be sanctioned and punished. And guys, it looks like we missed the part. It looks like we missed the part. Maybe I over scroll. Yeah, I did. So yes, and just like I'm saying from the beginning, there's always this part where you're hoping, you're, you're there, and you're believing that, oh, God will remove you from a scenario. He will not remove you because he has a reason why you are there. He wants you to learn something. He wants you to grow. He wants you to maybe be your best version. You know, he just wants to teach you a lot of things. And that's why he's making you to, to be wherever you are. So you don't have to fight it. You don't have to want to come out of it. Because there are lots of times that when we're going through challenges, most times, we're praying and telling God to remove us from the challenge. We're praying and telling God, Lord, remove me from this place. Lord, put me in another place. Lord, this place is so uncomfortable. Uncom this place is so complicated. I don't want to be here no more. I want to be where you want me to be. Yes, at, at that time, God wants you to be there. God wants you to be in that captivity. I remember my friend who have prayed and prayed and prayed. You don't even know what happened to her. Like, I think she has testified here anyway several times. God removed her from where she was, so her comfortable place, personal space. And told her to go back to her mom's house. At what age? And then you go there and then they're treating you like, look at this one. It looks like you're a beggar. It looks like you're suffering, you know. Because you've moved from that standard that you were. It was like high class. I was in my place by myself. I could take care of myself and all those things. And then now I'm in my mommy's house. It looks like I'm coming to beg. I'm coming to fight small, small things with my mother. It's not for you. Would you want to stay there? Of course, you pray and ask God to remove you there from there for some reason, you know. But God will be like, huh, you better build your house, so plant gardens. Because you see this place, you go day here for some time. You had better believe it, though. Ah, I know myself now. At some point, when I get some small, small wahalas, wahalas in this place, I pray God to remove me from here. He has not. And he's not going to remove me, but because of those small, small wala. He's probably building me for the next place he's taking me to. If I cannot stand the small, small baby, baby wala in this place that he's putting me to stand at any, at the sight of the slightest small wala, I want to run. At the sight of the slightest small wala, I want to run. Then when he takes me to that big place that will have bigger challenges, how am I going to do it? Oh yeah. Will I run away from there too? Imagine that he's using this to groom me for my marriage. Maybe, just maybe, there will be times that will be turbulent in my marriage like that. So now will I run away from my marriage? No. I've built, I have kids, me and the man, it's the dead do us part. Hmm? And that's why it's also very important to wait and stay in the place where God wants you to and get the right person. Am I saying there are not going to be challenges? There would be. But it would be nicer because you can always run back to God and say, Lord, you gave me this. Help me fix it. You have leverage. You have leverage. That's why it's good to get it right. That's why it's good to not just be in a haste to move. Imagine that all these things get me worked up, worked up, worked up, and I just choose my any place because I can afford it or something, and I just go there. Naomi left from a place that was barren, that was farming, and went to a place that was seemingly good. She came back bitter. 
Yeah, there are lots of places that I have opportunities to go to. I just need to say yes. I just need to say yes. It has to be a yes. And boom, everything will just be going on and on and on. You know? But I know what God has said to me. And some of those flashy places are the places that God doesn't want me at. It wouldn't make sense to nobody. I don't hope that it makes sense to anybody. It's not their vision. It's not their life. It's mine. It's me who is going to give an account to God that day. So no matter how emotional people get about it, no matter how angry people get about it, calling me all kinds of names, I am moved. I've gone past that place where I feel sorry or I feel bad and then I start bending, bending and breaking rules and values that I have because I want people to fit into my space. No. There are rules and regulations. There are standards and values that I hold here. I am breaking and bending for nobody. I did it before. It didn't help me. It worsened my situation. I worsened my life and I almost lost my life in the process. So I'm not doing that anymore. If you come to be my friend and you see that my rules and values and core values and, 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 and all the things I stand for, you're not comfortable with them, you're an adult. You just have to leave. It's simple. Friendship is not by force. To me, friendship right now is by purpose. You see? So if you don't like the purpose that God has given me, then you should not be in my space. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay not to be in my space. Don't feel bad about it. Don't feel sorry for being you. Don't feel sorry for, for making it understandable to the world that this is who you are and you're not planning to change for nobody because you're just a Jesus girl, because you're a Jesus freak. Don't be sorry for it. People of the world are not sorry when they're doing evil. People of the world are not sorry when they're doing their work of their master. Why should you be sorry when you're doing the work of your own master, Jesus? Why? You shouldn't be sorry. You should be unapologetic and you should hit your chest. My boast is in God. I get backing. So I need to panic. Pardon the panic. <laughs> hi, President du Iribuna. Tribuna. Oh, hi, President du Tribuna. Hi, Robin. Hi, Mom there, Mary. Happy Sunday, boss, boss. Happy Sunday. Thank you for coming. So, yeah, this is the part that I said I probably skipped. It says, pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall he have peace. So I came and scrolled up without actually reading this part. It says, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams, which ye cause to be dreams. So I was saying that, yes, a lot of times with my dream dreams, Maybe it's things that we've been pondering about, things that they've been pushing in our face. Mainstream media is not helping the matter. Social media is not helping the matter. They have all these agendas that they keep pushing in our minds. And the more we look at those things, the more we read those things, the more we watch those things, it starts fitting in our heads. And then we're thinking about it, we're meditating on it, and then we start feeling like that's how it's supposed to happen. No, it isn't. It isn't. Those dreams are dreams based on lies that you've been fed with. So we need to be careful with our ear gates, our eye gates. We need to be careful with all those things. Because what we see and what we hear often starts becoming a part of us. We meditate on it and then it starts becoming a part of us. And we start beginning to feel like it's true. Meanwhile, it's not. So let's go. It says, for the... For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years he be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. 70 years, guys. It was going to be 70 years. So that's why God was just telling them beforehand, build your houses, marry, so that you should not disappear. You know, your lineage should not be wiped out. So even God is interested in marriage. Even God is interested in multiplying, being fruitful and multiplying. He, he says in his word, this is now physical multiplication. It's not spiritual because most people who are too spiritual want to stick it only to spirituality so that they don't get the physical aspect of it. God is loving productivity, replenishing the earth physically and spiritually. Physically, get married, give birth to children. God is okay with that. Spiritually, 
Yes, you should also be able to preach the gospel and bring forth spiritual children. Yes, it is allowed. So yes, it's both ways. It's not just the, the spiritual part. There's also the physical part. Because if these people did not give birth to children and replenish the earth, their lineage was going to wipe out. God didn't want the lineage to wipe out. And so it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. This is how I knew that I'd missed this place because I had not read this part. This is like the main, 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 main scripture of Jeremiah chapter 29. Like we could not just have gone through without reading this. God knows the thoughts he has towards you. And it starts to bring you to a good place. To a perfect, to an expected end. And he says that no matter what happens, it's all working for your good. To them that love and serve God and are called according to his purpose. We always say, yes, it's all working for my good. Are you called? Do you love God? Are you called according to his purpose? That thing is for people who love him and are called according to his purpose. So you, whether you go claiming these promises from now to thy kingdom come. If you do not love God and you're not called according to his purpose, it's not going to work for you. And it doesn't mean that that scripture is not real. The scripture is very real. But you're just not qualified for that promise. There is a qualification for you to get that particular promise. That everything, even the evil things that are happening to you, should work for your good. Oh yeah, I, I know a lot of times where evil things have worked for my good. Where I start feeling so uncomfortable in a place. It's so uncomfortable. Like every single thing and every single person around me is making it very, very uncomfortable. And then I just know it's time to move. Yeah. Making me uncomfortable is not a good thing. But it's working for my good because he has to get me to move. Because it looks like if God is just telling me that princess move, I'm not going to move. Probably I've become so comfortable. Like, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so let's go. It says, I know the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To get you to an expected end. That's God's thoughts for you. But you also need to align. You need to align. And it says, um... Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I'll hearken unto you. When you pray to God, you'll hear you. If you love him, and you're called according to his purpose, you pray to him, he'll hear you. But if sin is lingering in your heart and in your life, he cannot. He says that your iniquities have separated me from you. Your iniquities have distanced me away from you. Light and darkness cannot dwell together. When light shows up, darkness disappears. But if you refuse for the light to shine in your darkness, then you're going to remain in darkness because God's spirit will not strive for man. It says, Then shall he call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I'll hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. There are times we search for God partially. We don't search for him with all our heart. God wants total surrender. God wants total yielding, total. See, partial obedience is equal to disobedience. Partial surrender is equal to no surrender. God wants you in a place where you're fully and totally surrendered to him. That he can do the things he wants to do with you. God cannot be in a vessel that is already full with you. He cannot fill you up when you're already filled with yourself. You need to read. You need to ask him to give you the grace to be read it of yourself so that he can fill you with himself. It's total surrender. Either you totally surrender or nothing. It says you are either hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out. God doesn't like lukewarmness. God doesn't like the middle thing. Because he knows that that middle thing is just the devil deceiving you. Making you to feel like you should stay comfortable in that place because anyways you're serving God. You're not. You're in the devil's camp already. It's either you're in God's camp or you're in the devil's camp. If you're in the middle, you're automatically in the devil's camp. So don't get it twisted. The enemy is just fooling you and making you to stay in that middle ground thinking that you're still serving God. No, you're gone already. You're gone already. And then it says, And I'll be found of you, saith the Lord. And I'll be found of you, saith the Lord. I'll turn away your captivity, and I'll gather you from all the nations, and from all the places whither 
I have driven you. Say the Lord, and I'll bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away. Because he has said, the Lord had raised us up prophets in Babylon. Know that thou say the Lord, the king that seated upon the throne of David, and all the people that dwell in the city, and of your brethren that are not gone forth with you unto captivity. I'll send upon them the sword. So there are times where we need to rely on God. We need to trust God. We need to hold on to God. Hi, Dazzleby Tony. Hi, Dazzleby Tony. Or Tony. I know Tony, but I don't know the other one. Hi, Mian. Bilal. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you all. Happy Sunday. So, yes. Um, basically, this is where we wrapped up with the other one. So, now we're going down. We read all of this part. So, when you search God with all of your heart, you're going to find Him. When you seek Him with all of your heart, you're going to find Him. Are you seeking God with all of your heart? Hmm? God knows the plans He has for you. You can trust God. You can trust Him. He's, he, he deserves to be trusted. He's worthy of your trust. You can trust him. You can afford to trust God. He will not fail you. So guys, this is where we're wrapping up with today for a chapter a day. I hope you had a great time. It's been a beautiful weekend, an awesome Sunday, and we're starting a new week tomorrow. Some people's week starts today. Well, I know that Monday is the first day of the week. So, I'm wishing you all a great week start. I know that your week is going to be blessed, super duper blessed. So I decree and declare like my pastor will always say, go and conquer your world in Jesus name. Well, 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 we're praying today that the Lord would help us to seek him with all of our hearts. We want to do a total surrender to him so that we can get the total blessings as well. Yeah. Let's do a total surrender so we can get total blessings. Father, we pray, oh God, we bring before you all your children all over the world. We pray that you're going to help us to totally and completely surrender, to totally and completely yield to you, oh God. Father, you say that we can only get answers and results when we seek you with all of our hearts. We can find you only when we do it fully, wholeheartedly, not partially, O oh God. Father, remove us from positivity, O oh God. Father, cause us to be the ones who search for you and seek you diligently. Lord, that we're going to do it wholeheartedly with all of our hearts and all of our beings. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because we know you always hear and answer. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say, Jainamus, thanks be to God. Okay, guys, this is it. Amen, amen, and amen. Thanks be to God for another amazing session. We are grateful. We have our audio Bible on all social media platforms. Go on there and get to be blessed. The Word of God says... Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So listening to the audio Bible done by me, it's a beautiful thing. And of course, you're going to grow your faith too. So that's cute. Don't forget, we have it on all social media platforms so you don't have any excuse. Whichever platform is comfortable for you, you can get on there and you'll still get the audio Bible. That's the whole idea. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then let's get right on. Let's just keep going. Let's keep going, going, going. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's, 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 let's go. Let's keep going, people. This is a chapter a day. It has been your favorite girl, Princess Cleeson, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> Tomorrow is another day. By the grace of God, we'll be starting a new week and a new chapter as well. It's going to be Jeremiah chapter 30. Oh my God, this is how far we've come. We've gone past the half of the book of Jeremiah because Jeremiah has 52 chapters. So we're going way past half. That is so fast. You know, it looks like days are running. Anyways, we're grateful to God for the honor. We're glad that you all are always here supporting us in one way or the other, being present. If you're not there, we won't be here. So we're really, really grateful and honored that you decide to spend a couple of hours or minutes from your life bank. Every single person has a 24-hour life bank. 
When you wake up in the morning, there's 24 hours of life that has been banked into your account. And for you to decide to use like 10 minutes from your bank account of life or 20 minutes or one hour or however long we've been here, I do not take it for granted. It's no jokes. Thank you so much for the honor. And so this is where we're wrapping up with the chapter idea for today. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all the updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. Father, we thank you for an amazing session. We thank you because we know that it's always from glory to glory. It's always from grace to grace. It's always moving from one level to another. Father, we thank you for how far you brought us, for how far you keep getting us, oh God. We are forever grateful. Take all the glory, oh God. Let your word be engrafted on the fleshy tables of our hearts so that we're going to go thereby. You are faithful, Father. There is none like you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness. We really do appreciate all that you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do in our lives. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, and amen. Until tomorrow, you all have a splendidly blessed week. From the bottom of my heart, that's what I wish you. Ciao, ciao.